folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, out here at the Pathfinder School Outdoor Classroom. What I want to talk to you guys about today is I want to talk to you about no map navigation. So no map, no GPS. But we want to be able to navigate or self-navigate or circumnavigate areas away from our camp or away from our car or away from our starting point and be able to get back to that spot. We may also desire to do some self-mapping of an area if we don't have a map. All of these things can be done very easily with a method called the Paul method. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes and get into that specifically. But there's a couple of things that you're going to have to understand before we get into this. And the first one is you have to understand how to take a visual bearing with your compass. So we'll talk about that briefly. You have to understand your pace count. So we'll talk about that briefly. You're going to need to understand the five tools that every woodsman should know to aid him in navigation, which is baselines, handrails, aiming off, backstops, and panic asthmas. And I have a video on those five tools specifically that I will link to this video. But we'll talk about them a little bit in this video as well. So stay with me and let's talk about visual bearings and pace counts real quick just to get a refresher before we start. Okay, so I'm going to do the best I can to explain shooting a visual bearing with a compass by holding the compass in front of the camera. Your compass should have a mirror on it, which enables you to tilt the mirror down and look at the bezel ring of your compass. It should also have a sighting device at the top that looks kind of like a set of gun sights. And you will hold this compass in front of you and aim this just like a gun at an object in a distance that you can see that you desire to walk to doesn't really matter how far away it is as long as you have a straight visual line to it. Then what you will do is you'll close your non-dominant eye. You'll open your dominant eye and aim with that just like you would a gun. You'll hold this directly in front of you. And when you get this aimed at the object, you will rotate this bezel ring by looking in the mirror until the needle is in the doghouse. Because the north needle is always going to point north, you want to put the north of your compass, what's called the doghouse, right over the top of that needle. At that point, the reading at the top of your compass is the bearing that you are traveling on. So as long as you walk with the needle in the doghouse and the needle doesn't leave the doghouse left or right, you're walking a straight line. Now if you're walking a long distance, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take that bearing, then you're going to want to shoot another bearing at an object that you can see visually that's not going to leave your sight as you walk to it. So let's say it's a tree you know, maybe 100 yards away or wherever the case may be, then you can shut your compass and walk to that tree. As long as you don't lose sight of the object, you can walk a straight line. It's when you go down into a holler and come back up and you've lost visual bearing or visual sight of that tree, that's when you're going to experience lateral drift. So you need to go to that tree and then shoot a bearing to another object in the same exact bearing. So you'd look through your compass with the needle still in the doghouse and you decide what object is in your direct line of sight not too far away close your compass and walk to that and so on until you got to that far distant object you were trying to get to for what we're going to do today you're going to do exactly the same thing you'll need to understand how to plug a visual bearing in and identify what that bearing is at the top of your compass because you'll need that direction or heading okay so let's talk about pace count real quick your pace count is how many actual paces it takes to walk 100 meters. And you need to figure that out in uphill terrain, downhill terrain, muddy terrain, snow covered terrain, and always with your pack on, never with your pack off. Whatever load you plan on carrying into the woods, that's what you need to be wearing when you figure your pace count because it will be different under load than just taking a stroll. So you need to factor those things and have them listed in your notebook so you understand what your pace count is. And your pace count is one full pace. So if I step off with my left foot, I'm only going to count paces on my right foot. So if I step off left, when my right foot hits the ground, that's one. When my right foot hits the ground again, that's two. So it's one full pace from the same foot. That's what you need to understand. That will give you a pace count. Once you understand what your pace count is over the different terrains, you can then average things out depending on the terrain environment that you're operating in. When you figure out your pace count, then you need to understand how to use pacing beads. So a real quick review on pacing beads, and again, we're working in meters. So what I do is I have two strands of beads on my compass. One is four beads, and one is nine beads. 
So I will start my pace count off and count until I get to my 100 meter pace count. So let's say on average for me, that's 62 paces. So I start counting one, two, three. When I get to 62, I will drop one bead. That means I've walked 100 meters. I start again. I drop another bead. I start again. When I get nine beads down and I get to my pace count again, I drop one on this side and that means I've walked one kilometer or 1,000 meters. This would be a five kilometer pace counting mechanism. You need to understand how to use that pace counter because it will become important in this navigational method as well. Okay, so a quick review of these five navigational tools. A baseline is generally a horizontal object to your travel route that you can use when you're coming back or returning. Let's just say that you set your camp up on a creek or on a river system or at the edge of that river using the four W's to select your camp. You found a good source of water. That becomes your baseline because it's a linear object to your travel route. A handrail is something that you can use while you navigate. That's going to be difficult to ascertain without a map, but you can create a handrail later during your travel route by doing self-mapping. A backstop is something that you don't want to go beyond. You already understand that if you go beyond that backstop, you have went too far if you're navigating to something. Again, works better if you have a map. will work fine for you after the fact if you are out doing your exploration to do your mapping of an area or do your scout or whatever the case may be and you come across something like a danger area. Maybe it's a big cliff or something like that. That could become a backstop for you later. Aiming off. Aiming off is used very good or for very good purpose if you are navigating and coming back to your camp. It can also be used if you're trying to find an area that has a linear baseline of any kind so that you can aim off to the left or the right depending on what your lateral drift is a few degrees so that you know when you hit that baseline you turn a certain direction to get to wherever you're going. In other words if my baseline was a river and my camp was at the edge of that river and I was out here somewhere and this is my direct azimuth, I might take an azimuth that's over here on purpose if my lateral drift is always to the right, knowing that I'm probably going to end up over here anyway. And then I know that all I have to do is turn left and walk down that river, and that becomes my baseline to where my camp is. So that's what aiming off is. A panic azimuth, in the case of self-navigation, generally speaking, a panic azimuth for you if you have unknown points your panic azimuth is going to simply be a reverse azimuth of what you started with. Whatever your first azimuth is, your panic azimuth becomes a reverse azimuth of that. That will at least get you going in the proper direction, hopefully, to get back to where you started from. Panic azimuths are much better if you have maps that already include baselines and handrails and backstops and things like that. You can panic azimuth to those areas and then navigate your way back from there. But in the case of self-navigation, a reverse azimuth is going to be your best panic azimuth from your original point. Okay, so let's talk real quick about the tools that we're going to need to effectively navigate without a map. Set out a route in miniature on paper or on the ground so that we can find our way back to the start point and map our travel route without having a map. We're going to need a compass. We're going to need a pace count. We're going to need pacing beads. We need some type of a measuring device that we can improvise or we can use the one on our compass. We need waypoint markers and a waypoint marker can be a simple orange bandana. So none of this stuff is anything that you shouldn't already have in your kit. We need paper and pencil and we need cordage. These are the tools that we're going to use in this project today. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do before we start this project is we're going to set up a route page in our notebook. And that route page is going to have three columns. It's going to have a column for an azimuth or degree reading. It's going to have a column for a distance and a column for any notes that you want to put. So when I start my navigation, I'm going to take my visual bearing on an object. So let's say I'm starting at my camp and I want to go out on a scout to look for resources. I'm going to find an object in the distance that I feel like navigating to or that I can still see that I'm not going to lose sight of. And if I'm going to lose sight of it, I've got to make sure that I leapfrog like we talked about. I pick an object and I figure out what the azimuth is. So let's just say it was 250 degrees. That was the azimuth at the top of my compass when the needle was in a doghouse and I had my compass pointed at the object. Now, 
I walked directly to that object with no wavering, the shortest possible route. And I figured the distance. So let's say I walked and it was two pacing beads. I dropped two pacing beads. That means I walked 200 meters. So we'll put 200 meters on here. Notes. Start. Okay? When I get to the object, I take my waypoint marker and I tie it on a branch or a limb or whatever that I can see at a distance. Now I can wander around between my start point and this flag all I want to. As long as I don't lose sight of this flag and I can get back to it. I can wander around, look for resources, check the creek bed for fancy rocks or fossils or good pieces of flint or check for animal sign or tracks or whatever I want to do as long as I don't lose sight of this. When I get ready to move on, I go right back to this flag and I grab it. I look at another object in a direction that I want to travel and I take another azimuth. Let's say our next azimuth is 150 degrees for sake of purpose. I walk directly again to that object. And let's say that object was 100 meters away. I can put notes in here or of something like Maybe I'm following a creek. Then at least I know when I go back and set up my map on the ground or on paper that for at least this hundred meters there was a creek bed that I was following. So I know there's water there later on down the line or anything like that. There could be a note on there, found good sign of this animal or that animal. Good spot to trap. Crossing game trail on this route. Good place to come back to for an ambush hunt. Any of those things can go in your notes. But I have to walk directly to the object, tie my waypoint flag on it again, then I wander around and explore. When I get ready to leave, I go right back to my waypoint marker and I take another visual bearing with my compass on where I want to go next. Well, let's say the next one is 175 degrees. And I walk it for 300 meters. So three pace beads. Okay? When I get there, I can write whatever scribble note I want to write. I tie my flag on it so it's visual, and I wander around without losing sight of that flag again, looking for resource or whatever I want to do. I keep doing that until I get to the point where, okay, it's time for me to head back to camp or whatever the case may be. Then I'm going to use this to make a visual map of what I just did in miniature on the ground or on paper, and that's going to give me a direct line azimuth back to my camp instead of having to do reverse azimuths to every one of these points that I'm not going to know exactly where they were anyway probably because my flag is now gone. So it's easier for me to do this route and find a direct azimuth, a straight line distance back to my camp. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay. So we went out on our scout and we have done exactly what we were supposed to do. We've made a few notes along the way. We started out from camp on an 80 degree heading. We passed a large rock, we crossed a trail, crossed a stream, found a grove of pines, and we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven waypoints there. Okay? Our eighth waypoint is going to be camp because we've decided it's time to get back to camp. But what we don't know is what's our direction, what's our distance. To figure that out, we're going to draw this route on a piece of paper or on the ground using our compass and that's going to give us these two answers. I'm going to visually show you that on the ground right now. Okay, so to set this up on the ground and for visual sake for you guys, I'm going to use this pink colored Mason's line because I think you'll be able to see it on the camera. You wouldn't be able to see bank line, but bank line is what I would normally use for this. Then you're going to need pins for the ground or sticks in the same number that you have waypoints. And right now we have seven waypoints. Our eighth one is going to be back to camp. So we need seven sticks. I think I have eight here. Then we're going to need our compass and we're going to need a measuring device. And for this we're going to use our axe. And what I've done is I have made one inch increments by burning in with just a hot file, a hot three cornered file and burned increments on here every one inch. That's going to be my measuring device. Now, you decide the scale of your map by 
how big these increments are. If a one inch increment equals 100 yards, then your map's going to be pretty small depending on the distance you walk. So if you're going to do it on paper, maybe you could use one inch as 100 yards and use the measuring device that is on your compass. If you're going to do it on the ground, you may want to make it a little bit bigger scale. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use each one of these marks as 10 meters instead of 100 meters. So 10 of these marks will equal 100 meters. Realistically speaking, if you're out on a short scout, you're not going to walk more than 100 to 120 meters between waypoints anyway, especially in the state of Ohio, or you're going to lose sight of your waypoint marker. Anyway, you're not going to walk that far away from it. When you get back to that, the next visual object is probably going to be 100 meters or less away that you can see without losing sight of it by going off the side of a hill, down the side of a hill, up or downhill, something like that. So your measurements are going to be fairly close, 100 meters to 150 meters probably tops in eastern woodlands. That's why I chose the scale I did and also so you guys could see it visually on the ground. Okay, so I've taken a pin and stuck it into the ground to represent my camp or where I started. Then I've taken my string, again, I'm using pink string here so you guys can see this. I would use bank line for this normally. And I'm going to put it around there. Moving these pins out of the way, I'm going to pick my compass up. And I'm going to plug in my first bearing, which was 80 degrees. And then I'm going to lay my compass on this, right against this pole. And move it until my needle's in the doghouse. Now I know I've got an 80 degree bearing coming off of that post. Now I can pull this line straight and stretch it out, just like this on the ground, and make sure that it is following that bearing perpendicular, and then measure it off. And I walked 100 meters, so that's 10 marks on my axe. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I need to put a pin in the ground right there. Then I'll wrap my string around that, just like this. That was the first leg of my route. Now I need to do the same thing again. The next reading was 48 degrees. So I plug 48 degrees into my compass, lay it on this pin again, and rotate it till the needle's in the doghouse. And now I know that my route is going this way. So I'll stretch the line out again, keeping it taut. And I want to measure 120 meters out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So my next pin is going to go right here. And I'll wrap that around my thing and tighten it up and verify that everything is right, that all my lines are straight. That's a little bit off. So I'm going to move it just a little bit. There we go just to make sure it's right. Then I would subsequently plug in all the other bearings and factor the distances until the end of my route. Okay, so now I have my route out here on the ground as I walk it from my camp and around. Now I can figure out how to get back to camp very easily because all I have to do is take this line over to the other side just like this, lay it on this pole, and stretch it out. Make sure we're good and tight here. Just like this. And now we know the distance and the bearing, and we can factor that in very easily with our compass and our measuring device. So we'll take our compass, And we'll lay it on here. We'll rotate our bezel ring until the north needle's in the doghouse. And that will give us our bearing, 352 degrees. And then if we measure this thing and we count our distance, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 to here. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So we are 300 meters from our camp 
Now, if we set our camp up against something like a creek or something, then we could aim off a little bit left or right to make sure we get there. But we have a lot of information now that we can use if we draw this on paper. Let's say that we're walking back to our camp and we're measuring our distance as we go. We know that we only need to go 300 meters. So if we walk more than three pacing beads, if we're at five pacing beads and we didn't find our camp, we probably missed it. We need to go back to our last known point of origin. If we cross a creek or a stream again, somewhere along the line, or a trail that crossed any of these points, then we can probably assume that it runs in a perpendicular line to that point to where we were at, and we can draw that on our map and use that later for a backstop or a handrail. Well, guys, I appreciate you joining me out here today for another video. Just a little quick explanation, really watered down, of the Paul method of navigation. It's a very complicated method for self-navigation. I encourage you to look it up and do some research if you're interested in that method. But this is a very dummy down version of how to do it that will work very well for you if you just understand some simple concepts. I thank you for your comments. I thank you for your views. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, my family, everyone affiliated with the Pathfinder School and Self-Reliance Outfitters. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.